So you're probably familiar with the idea that the resistance of a wire depends on its length, its cross-sectional area, and of course what material it's made out of, which determines the resistivity. So put it all together, and the resistance of a wire is a resistivity multiplied by the length divided by the area. What happens if you take two resistors and connect them together? Well, if we connect them end to end, we can make a series connection out of the two resistors. What have we really done here? This would be the same thing as just having one longer resistor of the same cross-sectional area. In fact, if these were both identical resistances, just referred to as R0, then this equivalent resistance formed by putting the two of them end to end would have a resistance of two times R0. And if they're of different values, then we can still come up with a general equation for the equivalent resistance of any number of resistors connected in this manner, connected in series. So let's draw a schematic diagram of two resistors connected in series with a battery. The battery provides a potential difference. Uh, generally, we should say delta V, but let's just assume that the negative terminal is at zero. I think that allows us to get away with just calling the voltage V. So our first resistor is R1, our second resistor is R2. And the one thing we know about a series connection is that the electrical current has to be the same everywhere. Whether I put my ammeter right there in the circuit, or I put my ammeter here, or I put the ammeter here, it doesn't make a difference. The current is the same at every point in a series loop. So let's draw a symbol for the flow of current. This is, of course, conventional current. So external to the battery, the conventional current flows from the positive to the negative. However, internal to the battery, conventional current is flowing from negative to positive. Anyhow, the conventional current in this circuit flows clockwise. So we'd like to say that this circuit behaves exactly the same as a circuit with just one resistor in it that has an equivalent value resistance. OK, Ohm's law gives us the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, and it's true in total. In other words, the voltage of the battery is equal to the current through the series loop multiplied by the equivalent resistance. The Ohm's law is also true in parts. So if I were to take a voltmeter and just connect it across resistor number one in an attempt to find the value of V1, well, V1 should be equal to this current I times the value of R1. And likewise, I could hook a voltmeter across resistor number 2, and it should be true that V2 is equal to I times R2. Now, are all the I's I've expressed in each of these three equations the same? Yes, of course. That's the whole definition of a series connection. Whenever things are connected in series, they all have to have the same amount of current. Um, so let's invoke. Kirchhoff's loop rule. Kirchhoff's loop rule says the net change in electric potential around any circuit loop is equal to zero. In other words, the total voltage gain has to equal the sum of all the voltage loss. So if we pick a point like here, call it point P, there's a voltage gain from the battery, and then there's a voltage loss across the first resistor and another voltage loss across the second resistor. 
we're back to point P, we've made our way all the way around the loop, and the net change in voltage has to be zero if we're back to the same value of electric potential here equal to zero because of our symbol for ground. So all we're saying is the voltage gained by the battery has to equal the voltage drop across resistor number one plus the voltage drop across resistor number two. Well, if I take that along with these expressions from Ohm's law, then we have I times R equivalent equals I times R1 plus I times R2. Since that represents one singular amount of current, we can divide it out of the equation, and we get the result we expected. When resistors are connected in series, the equivalent resistance is just equal to the sum of the two resistors. Okay, well, what if I had three resistors connected in series? Yep, then the equivalent resistance is R1 plus R2 plus R3, and on and on for any number of resistors. I guess we could say R equivalent is just the sum of R subscript I. If this is a 1 ohm resistor, and the other one is a 1,000 ohm resistor, then the equivalent resistance in this example would be equal to 1,001 ohms. And we notice that 1,001 is larger than 1,000. It's greater than the greatest individual resistor in that circuit. In the next video lesson, we'll present the rule for resistors connected in parallel.